Sound is a compressional or longitudinal wave. We talked in an earlier lesson that a compression region is a region of high pressure and density and a rarefaction region is a region of low pressure and density. Those regions are indicated on this model by the line spacing. Compression regions are where the lines are close together. Rarefaction regions are where the lines are further apart. Humans can hear roughly between 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. That range narrows with age and other factors, but generally 20 to 20,000 hertz is a good ballpark for what humans can hear. Giraffes, I'm told, communicate with each other below 20 hertz in the infrasonic range. Of course, the lowest number of hertz you can have is zero hertz. There's no such thing as negative 10 hertz. So there aren't so many infrasonic waves. But giraffes apparently communicate with each other by making sound waves that are less than 20 hertz that humans, of course, can't hear. Beyond 20,000 hertz, we call those waves ultrasonic waves. And those frequencies go very, very high. Dogs, rabbits, deer can hear pitches up to possibly 100,000 hertz. But humans can only hear about 20,000. And of course, you can do many other useful things with sound waves beyond 20,000 hertz. You've heard of ultrasound therapy, ultrasound to diagnose fetal conditions, and so forth. The fundamental frequency of a sound wave determines its pitch. That is, a high frequency yields a high pitch. And if the frequency is very large, the wavelength must be very short. Here's on the right a model of how you can think of a sound wave that has a high frequency. The wavelength is very, very short. And because of that, instruments that make high frequencies tend to be rather tiny because the wavelengths are comparatively small. All of these are things that tend to emit high frequency pitches. Low frequency pitches have a low pitch. They have long wavelengths. Here is a simple model of how you can think of things with a low frequency. They have a long wavelength, which is why instruments that have low pitches tend to be rather large, like this tuba. I should say, of course, sound is not a transverse wave, as I've shown here. But it's very difficult to show a compressional wave with a long wavelength. So I'm using this as a model to hopefully help you understand that low frequencies mean long wavelengths. And here are a few things that also have low frequencies. The voice of the Incredible Hulk, for example. The number and intensity of a source's harmonics give it its unique sound quality, or timbre. If we were to put a violin and a trumpet and a clarinet in front of a classroom, have everyone close their eyes, and have these three instruments, one at a time, play exactly the same pitch, let's say concert B flat, chances are the, the student would pick out, oh, that's the sound of a trumpet or that's the sound of a violin, or that's the sound of a clarinet. And the reason for that is, while the fundamental of those three instruments for concert B-flat is exactly the same, the number of harmonics that are present in the instrument and the intensity of those harmonics influence the sound quality, which is why we can tell the difference between those three instruments. The human ear captures not only the fundamental, but it also captures the harmonics that are present and puts those into a single waveform, which is different from the waveform that we get from a different instrument. So that's pretty neat. Down here in the lower left, tuning forks tend to have pretty much just a fundamental and almost no harmonics. Sound is a longitudinal wave consisting of high-density, high-pressure compressions 
and low density, low pressure rarefactions. Humans can hear from about 20 to 20,000 hertz. Below 20 hertz are infrasonic sound waves. Beyond 20,000 hertz are the ultrasonic sound waves. The pitch of a sound source is determined by its fundamental frequency. The sound quality or timbre of a sound is due to the number and intensity of the various harmonics.